In today's video, we will take a look at the most common type of a shader that Unity allows us to implement. It is called an unlit shader. Unlit because it does not have any light calculations incorporated at the start, opposite to a surface shader, which we will cover in the future video. So the basic version will just add color to the object without any light effects. Object will be not affected by light in the scene. Shaders in Unity are written in a declarative language called ShaderLab. The shader calculations themselves are embedded into the ShaderLab code using the CG program scope and written using CG language, which stands for G for graphics. It is a very similar language to the most common shader language called high-level shader language HLSL. So everything outside of the CG program is written in the shader lab language. So in Unity, let's create an unlit shader and inspect its structure. The topmost scope is called shader. In its declaration, we can define the path that the shader will be placed in. We will use this path when selecting shader for our material. Inside the shader, we have two scopes properties and subshader. In this video, we will be focusing on the properties section. There are eight types of properties that we can use. Let's take a look at the property declaration and its structure. First, we declare the name of the variable that will be used in a shader program. Here, it is called main text. After that, in brackets, we are declaring the name of the variable that will be displayed in the material inspector. Opposite to a mono behavior, inspector will use this name instead of the name of the variable. In the same brackets, after a column, we declare a type of the property. There are eight different types of properties and we will go through each one of them in a minute. After that, the equals sign, we need to write the default value. Remember that the property declaration has to stay open, so no semicolon at the end of the line. Now let's go through all of the properties that we can use. They are split into three groups. The first group, called number properties. Here we can declare three types of properties. Int and integer value. Float, a floating type value. And a range also a floating type, which will give us an ability to clamp the value between two numbers. Second group has the color and the vector property. Both color and vector consist of four components. The difference is that the color will display a color picker in the inspector and the vector will display four individual float fields. And the last group, which is the texture group, here we have three types. 2D, the most used type of texture, it's a texture that will be placed on a 3D model using UV coordinates. Cube map, a texture used for reflection generation. And a 3D texture, less common than the other ones, it is used for simulating volumetric effects such as fog or smoke. As we mentioned before, the properties are declared in the shader lab language but the shader code itself is written in the CG language. To make use of those variables in the CG program, we have to create connection variables. To do it, we must first declare a property in shader lab and then a global variable using the same name in CG. In the later video, when we will discuss data types, we will learn what CG type matches which shader lab type. As you probably noticed, there are no variables like boolean or enums which would enable us to switch states in shaders. There are properties called drawers that enable us to transform property types to those state switching types. But we will cover that in the next video. For now, that's all that we need to know about shader properties. So see you in the next video.